Well, the bug is all cleaned up, and the guy who's responsible jammed up. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. You know, formerly, I have to say allegedly, uh, but he walked himself into the police station after, I don't know, one of the most, I think, I think, a unique law enforcement approach to finding a uh, graffiti vandal out there. But you know what? I learned a lesson, another Rhode Island lesson, and I learned them all the time, and that is uh, lesson number 674 in Rhode Island. Don't screw around <laughs> with the big blue bug. <laughs> or, uh, you know, wrong termite, pal. Uh, we'll talk to uh, one of the stalwarts of uh, the big blue bug. Uh, Tony Jesus is here. He is, uh, he's a, you know, but we'll get some yard advice and, and some, we got to get some termite advice. You know, we got to get something out of this whole situation. But uh, it's good to see me, Snow Friend. Uh, so stay tuned. We will, inv we will tell you the, uh, I don't know, the moral of the story and the, uh, the painting of the big blue bug. All right, let's go to the rundown and check on some things. Uh, this is uh, fascinating. Uh, Donald Trump obviously thinks this is a, a huge win, but uh, if the Democrats pulled this thing off in Georgia, it would have been something else. Uh, here's the latest on that race. Tonight, let's celebrate, and tomorrow, the real work will begin. Former Georgia Secretary of State Karen Handel won Georgia's sixth congressional district seat last night. My pledge is to be part of the solution to focus on governing. In his concession speech, Democrat John Ossoff seemed to claim a moral victory in making a close race of a county that has gone Republican since the Carter administration. At a time when politics has been dominated by fear and hatred and scapegoating and division. This community stood up. Political analysts say Democrats will have to figure out a new strategy to win back the House. Democrats, you know, have to either redouble their, their, their efforts at those kinds of voters or find a different kind of voter right. to, to go and peel away. President Trump repeatedly tweeted his support of Handel in the days leading up to the race. Many viewed the runoff as a referendum on his performance. A special thanks to the President of the United States of America. The president was among the first in his party to congratulate Handel, tweeting in part, fantastic job, we are all very proud of you. But anti-Trump sentiment made the race the most expensive in House history, with the candidates spending more than $56 million, nearly double the previous record. Uh, the thing here is, is that uh, Ms. Handel kind of stayed away from the president during the entire race. You know, that, that kind of recognition but distance and the democratic candidate nobody knew him in the neighborhood so all of a sudden this race which was highly um, uh, financed uh, on both sides ends up being some kind of litmus test on donald trump you gotta be kidding me it's not and uh, don't be fooled by anybody who who says that it is uh, sean spicer is trying to figure out probably i'm guessing he's trying to figure out how to uh, step out gracefully there's rumors that he's going to be uh, stepping up and that's in quotes to the director of communications, which means he would not have everyday responsibilities. I think the challenge is finding somebody to do what he does. And after we show you this CBS package on concepts of transparency and truth and correct data and all that kind of stuff, you have to wonder who would want to step into Spicer's shoes. Good afternoon. For the first time in eight days, Press Secretary Sean Spicer allowed cameras to record the White House briefing. We've looked at a lot of data that suggests that uh, when you look at the number of availabilities and, and interviews that the president's given, uh, it's pretty significant compared to past administrations. Records kept by CBS News indicate Mr. Trump has actually done fewer interviews and press conferences at this point in his presidency than his predecessor. The president's last sit-down interview was over a month ago, and he's held one solo press conference in February. Despite being the president's chief spokesman, Spicer couldn't answer key questions, like whether the president agrees with the intelligence community's assessment that Russia interfered in the 2016 election. I have not sat down and talked to him about that specific thing. Or whether the president has seen a draft of the Senate's health care bill. I don't know if he's seen the legislation or not. But Opaqueness goes beyond the briefing room, like keeping secret records of White House visitors. 
A link to a page that's supposed to post staff salary says it's still being updated, and Mr. Trump has yet to release his tax returns, parting with decades of presidential precedent. I have been under audit almost like since I became famous. Okay. Mr. Trump's Justice Department has also directed federal agencies to limit information they provide Congress, drawing the ire of even Republicans, like Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Charles Grassley. In a letter to the president, Grassley called the department's policy absurd and nonsense. The president's defenders say his tweets make him more transparent than his predecessors, but sometimes they cause more confusion. Yeah, well, we all know that. Listen, I, I don't understand how Sean Spicer literally comes out so many times citing data that proves his point or the, citing the existence of data that proves the point but doesn't show the data because he knows that the news organizations are going to go find the data which generally disproves his point. Uh, and this is the constant cycle. And listen, I'm guessing the guy's not a dumb guy. You know, local guy. How can he be a dumb guy? He's from Barrington, right? Uh... But I don't know how often you want to put your head in that meat grinder. At least you can kind of step, step up and out as opposed to stepping out. Because um, I don't know how he sleeps at night just trying to, to spin it that way. Uh, it's, just, uh, it's just too much. I don't know who they're going to find to, to replace him, but it's going to be um, something else. And uh, the idea that the press secretary has never talked to the president about the Russian investigation or specifically what's in the health care bill, I don't know how we compute that. I don't know how we compute that. Um, General Assembly activity. There's a lot going on. The budget is being debated tomorrow night, and uh, there's a lot in there, of course. By the time it gets to debate, everything is kind of fait accompli, but there are some other bills that are kind of interesting here uh, that you ought to keep your eye on. Here's a headline on the domestic violence thing. Um, Representative Tansy there has been the chief sponsor on a bill that would prevent gun owners, I'm sorry, anybody hit with domestic violence convicted of, of, of that kind of category of crime not to be able to have a gun. So the gun owners are saying, well, look, we're not going to make the argument that we should have it. We're going to make the argument about who gets stuck for domestic violence. You follow that? It's not about the guns availed to people convicted of domestic violence. They're trying to figure out about the tactics involved in actually convicting somebody for domestic violence. Tricky. So watch the details on that. That's something we ought to do a program on here and, and we'll uh, in, in short shrift. Next uh, story in the General Assembly I think is kind of interesting. This is outrageous. I don't know if you guys have been following this, uh, but there's $12.5 million uh, that has been scooped. You know what a scoop is? Just like scooping ice cream? Let me show everybody what scoop is. Scooping. So you go in and you say, okay, from this particular line item, we need money over there, so let me scoop it from there and let me put it over there, okay? Well, guess what? We pay in our electric bills through National Grid $12.5 million for something called the State Energy Efficiency Fund. Well, they're scooping it. So now we're writing a check for a dollar amount specific to that fund, and they're taking the fund and scooping it. Do we get rebates? You may want to ask your rep about that. And finally, they're taking a look at uh, the, uh, the line item veto with, you know, setting up this commission, which, of course, will take some time in and of itself. Do not let your state, state senators and reps get away with putting this thing on the shelf. We are one of only six states in America that does not have a line item veto for the governor, and doggone it, we need it. All right. Speaking of the General Assembly and the shenanigans that goes on there from time to time, uh, we've been chronicling mostly on the radio the Stephen Archambault situation. Uh, we have a headline here about his apology, which was caused by this uh, really, really untoward behavior, finger pointing and all, when uh, he was called out by a witness, Terry Gorman from Rhode Islanders for Immigration Law Enforcement, who was just testifying on some bills that he believes strongly on. And uh, he was distracted by the senators laughing with other. Um, senators, and he called him out on it, and he got this. Am I missing the joke, S Senator? I said, Sir, am I you missing? Can, you can continue to well, testify. So it's difficult to testify when three people are laughing. Whatever I'm seeing back here is my business. It's okay. your business. It's with... my business. You address the committee directly when it's your turn. I refuse to sit here and be laughed at. That's what it makes you feel like when what three I people are laughing about. after I made a statement. Directly and don't ever do that again. 
The, we we kind of clipped it there, but it's the uh, the water sip. I like that one. The uh, don't you ever do that again. That is a. Like you can drink angrily. You know how to drink angrily? It's like. <laughs> anyway, uh, this guy's a knucklehead, and he's got an anger management problem. Finally, he's been cajoled into apologizing. Here's the tail end of it. We got it from the radio side. Uh, pardon us, uh, splicing the old uh, video with the new audio. I apologize to all of you, uh, and I want to let everyone in the Senate know that my actions last week reflected very poorly on the committee and on everyone here, and I want to offer you and all the people of the state of Rhode Island my sincere apologies. Now, he finally got around to the people of the state of Rhode Island, but the entire first end of the speech was how much he apologized actually to the state Senate, which again shows you how insular and just tunnel visioned the folks on Smith Hill can be. Uh, uh, he ran for attorney general in 2008. Can you imagine? <sighs> the attorney general. Yeah, his statewide interests hopefully are over based on that. We'll see though. People in Smithfield have it in their hands. Nibbles. By the way, I got a lot of heat yesterday on the radio weekdays 3 to 6 on WPRO because I couldn't remember and or figure out and I can't remember if I couldn't remember or if I couldn't figure out wh what Nibbles was. Lexi couldn't figure it out. I told you immediately. You didn't tell me immediately. You were like, oh, no, let me look that up. Okay. It's a termite. Here's the headline. Big blue bug vandalism suspect surrenders. Investigation continues. And here's what uh, Mayor Alorza had to say about it. It's terrible that these kids throughout the city, you know, it's not even good art. You know, if it was one, if it was good art, that'd be one thing. But this is junk art. Oh, we did have video on that. I don't know what, what's happening there. Hold on a second. Just... I'm sick of you and the big blue bug story all day long. How you doing, my friend? Good, thanks. Good to see nice you. Nice to see you again. Um, give me the moral of the story up front. Then we'll lay it out for everybody. Well, I, I hope the moral of the story will be that people just shouldn't take advantage and do things and damage private property and even public property. I mean, I'm, I'm just a little bit sick, too, of, <laughs> to quote Sasha Ball, I'm a little bit sick of people damaging the murals that we have. We have some beautiful murals. They get tagged. We have buildings that get tagged. And, you know, the big blue bug got tagged. But... You know, I mean, the, the moral of the whole story is, you know, quit doing it. Just, you know, get a, get a canvas, get some paper. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually informed that uh, this is really rampant in the city of Providence right now. Yeah. Uh, where, and I, I don't understand the nature. We're going to have to bring back our graffiti expert that we've had uh, on in the past. When we come back, we'll lay out the story if you didn't follow it, which I think is probably impossible, and, and uh, run down the details. Stay with us. In case you've been out of town, here's the story. Police say this is the man who spray painted and vandalized a Rhode Island landmark, Nathan Bomier. We told you when drivers woke up to see the big blue bug in Providence covered in graffiti, Providence police investigated and put out this photo of him asking for your help tracking him down. Tuesday morning, police say Bomier walked into their department with his attorney and turned himself in. The giant advertisement for exterminator Big Blue Bug Solutions has been there along 95 for decades. Late last week, crews came in and repainted the bug, even putting on a graffiti repellent. Over the years, Nibbles Woodaway became more than just an ad. It's become a landmark for the creative capital, which is why residents reacted strongly to it being defaced and why police wanted to track him down fast. We contacted the family, suggested he turn himself in. And, I mean, look, it's not a major felony, but it's something that, um, you know, we wanted to get cleared up because it's, it's something that everybody sees as they're traveling on the highway every day, thousands of people. And it's, it's vandalism, it's destroying other people's property, and um, it's something we wanted to take care of as soon as we could. You had talked before a little bit about this possibly being more than just him, it being a group of people. Is that still being investigated? So the investigation's still open, and uh, we, we still have interest in other people. Look, there's, there's, there's no doubt that the affinity that the state of Rhode Island has for this 
termite, mm -hmm. uh, guided law enforcement's uh, reaction. Uh, I almost choked last week when the when the, when, when they put the photo out, and every media outlet that, that I could count, just about. Put it up as if uh, we had some kind of violent criminal out there. And, you know, I just wanted to raise the question for everybody. But the feedback that I got, Tony, was that um, nobody was bothered by that. That 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 that, that your company and that and that uh, symbol. What do we call it? Well, it, it, what it is a symbol. It? It's a mascot, maybe. I, I think that, it's that a good way. That's to... a good. That mascot, you know, means a lot to people, and. Uh, the police make a good point that you know it is in a high traffic area, um, and so it kind of hit. You know, it it might have been the ultimate vandal move, right? Maybe it actually inspires a little bit more cleanup and enforcement around the city. I don't know. I'm hoping that, that that's one of the reasons why we we prosecuted. We were asked right in the beginning, would we prosecute if it if they caught the offender, and we told them absolutely we would. Oh, well, I would expect you to. Yeah. I mean, why would, why, why, would you, why would you not? Yeah, but we, but we were asked the question, and we said right away, there was no hesitation we were going to prosecute. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the history of the Big Blue Bug is, is actually fascinating. Uh, all you got to do is bring the subject up and calls from all over the place come. And you actually called the radio show yesterday to make right. sure everybody understood that it was perfectly well-zoned. Yes, uh, it was. Did, what's the, the story? How many years now is the bug It, it went up in 1980. So there was nothing like it anywhere, you know, around. And when we who built it? Uh, it was a company called Avena Sign. Uh, they're no longer in business, uh, but uh, but Avena Sign built the bug, and it was assembled. It was brought to the roof in pieces, and assembled. And they had guys with walkie-talkies on the other side of 95, saying, "Bring it forward, move it up." <laughs> it was quite the project for a couple of days. Hmm. And. It's been structurally sound the entire time. Knock on wood, it's been structurally sound. It's, it's hurricane proof. It's a, survived a couple of hurricanes that we've had up here. So. And, it's, and it's legally zoned. It's, pro, it's private property. It is. The judge said something about it being, uh, you know, about the, the actual crime being a public property defacing. It, it, it's not. It's a, <laughs> but it, I guess that's where the gray area and the emotion of this thing exists because people feel like it, it, like it is a public... I, I think it's become part of Rhode Island law. Or, you know, it's the Rhode Island icon, one of, you know, three or four of the big things that we have. I mean, we have the CB, we have the Independent Man, you know, the Rhode Island Red down there. And so, but it's, it, it's, I mean, but we've always loved the bug. We always thought it was popular, and it wasn't until something like this happened that we just realized how many people really cared and well, how much they cared. Well, well you guys are, are you, you and Steve are, 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 are marketing you know, quiet marketing geniuses here. In fact, did I, did I not drive by a billboard the other day that actually just said you're only a mile away from the big blue bug? Yes. I mean, all that space where you could be talking about transacting business, right. you just are drawing attention to the big blue bug. Why not at this point, right? It, exactly. I mean, the bug is what people know. You know, it was why the name was changed a few years ago. Um, because people knew the bug. I mean, yeah, from from New England Pest Control to the Big Blue Bug, bug solutions. solutions, right, right. Because everybody knew the bug, and if we'd go out anywhere, we mentioned things, people would say New England Pest Control. Yeah, you know, with the Big Blue Bug. Oh, the bug. Now is now is a termite a bug? Yes, a termite. Well, termite is an insect. They're, they're all cut. It has six legs, okay, three so, parts so of the body. So am I to be faulted for for at least wondering out loud yesterday, extemporaneously? what the actual bug was before I was berated by listeners <laughs> calling me an idiot over the notion that I couldn't remember or know that it was a termite? No, people think it's a fly, they think right. it's a beetle. I mean, we, we get all kinds of things. Like, like, how do I know what a termite looks like? Right. Have you ever looked at a termite? No. <laughs> no, when you kill the termites, do you see them? Well, we do, yes. Under a microscope. Right, yes. They, they, it's, not like, it's not like termites run around and you can see the definitive physical attributes of a termite. No, you don't, because termites live basically in the soil. Right. They don't come out in so the open. So can you so absolve me of, of not understanding I can definitely termite? absolve because I can tell you we get calls all the time asking, what exactly is that big blue bug? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> that creature on the roof. All right. Um, when we come back, we might as well get a little advice about termites, the bugs, and everything else that's going on out there. Got to get something productive out of this ridiculous <laughs> crime. Stay with us. You know, we were just talking during the break with Tony over the the idea that uh, they are looking at other suspects because this could not have been a one-man job. No, right? it couldn't. No, no. 
By the way, every time I see this video, I start to get woozy. I'm not a big height guy. I mean, that sucker is up there. It really is up there. It's, it's, the building is a little over two stories high in that area, and then the bug is another 15 feet off the ground. So you're talking, yeah, you're almost you know, over 40 feet off the ground. Does the bug require maintenance? It, periodically, we wash it. We, we do have to wash it. I mean, other than that, it's fiberglass, so it's fairly maintenance-free. Every 10 years, we've been painting it, so it's about two years early <laughs> that we would have normally By done. By the way, I mean, to the mayor's credit, he, he made a point about how bad the art was. I don't even know what they were trying to accomplish. What, what was that design they tried to stick We have there? no idea. We've, been, we've all looked at it. No one can exactly figure Are it out. Are you curious? I, I would like to know what he had. Yeah, I, I would like to know what it is. Does what, it mean what you, something? What were you trying to accomplish? Yeah, does it stand for something? Was it a symbol of something? Mm. It'll be interesting to see when uh, this case is adjudicated. I'm guessing it'll plea out. I wonder if he'll ever have to make a public statement about what it is he was trying to accomplish. I, I would think he would plea out, but you never can tell. Mm. Uh, bug season. Yes, it is. What, uh, what, ticks, mosquitoes, blah, blah, blah. What, mm -hmm. are you, what are you most worried about? Ticks and mosquitoes, really, at this time of year, you have to be concerned with, particularly if you're a person who goes camping, hiking, fishing, maybe the Little League games at night, and soccer practices will be starting up, football, pop on a football, and things like that. So if you're spending time outdoors, you need to make sure you're wearing some type of a protection, something like an off, something with DEET in it really gives you good protection. And if you're a hiker or a camper and you go out in the woods to, uh, to do your thing, you need to make sure that you're putting some insect protection on, and particularly on your shoes and socks. Uh, Dr. Tom Ather down at URI, he did a study, and he says you can present, uh, prevent uh, tick infestation on you up to 70% by just treating your shoes and socks. You know what? I never think about that. You know, with all the golf that I play, not well, but well, you, you don't hit it in the woods, play. though, right? You're in the fairway. No, well, all the time. it's actually interesting. <laughs> you know, there are times when I say, you know what, I'll take a shot rather than take a stroke <laughs> rather than have to deal uh, worrying about the ticks. Right. And I, you know, I tend to go with long pants a little bit longer than than usual simply because of the tick issue. I mean, mm -hmm. it's probably smart. But you should really just spray, you know, in addition to the sunscreen and everything else, just spray down your footwear and your exposed area. Exactly. Right? And particularly, like I said, if you're spending time outdoors, it'll really help a lot keep the keep the ticks and mosquitoes away. What's the number one uh, thing that people don't think about when it comes to summertime and, and the bugs? I think people just uh, take things for granted, their homes. Um, I always tell people it's good once a month Take a walk around your house. Look up, look down. Um, are there any trees that are overhanging the house hanging on there that would make it easy for ants and insects to get into your house? Do you have any water damage? Um, things like uh, standing water. Maybe you didn't clean the gutters in the fall, and particularly with all the rain we've had this season. If water's standing up, that's a moisture problem that could create problems with copper or ants, mosquitoes breeding up there, and things like so that. So, so trees hanging over the house are invitations. Yeah, they really are, particularly for copper the ants that live in those trees. It's like a bridge. So even if you were spraying the outside of your house, if the trees are up high hanging you on the roof. Meaning if they're touching the house? If they're touching the house, okay. yeah. They're not going to jump off. So they, they do have jump. to be touching the They don't the travel. House. No, not yeah. like that. And what do they look like in, when you go under a microscope? Yeah, copper the ants are about a quarter of an inch to, or more, and the big queens can be uh, almost an inch. Those you can see. All right. Uh, well, congratulations on all the success with the company. Uh, 10 second response. Probably a good bad break, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. Unfortunately, you know that old expression if you're given lemons, you make lemonade, and we kind of get some lemonade out of this. All right. And remember, it's a termite. Good to see you back. Thanks. Thanks. Final good word when we come back. State Representative Patricia Morgan tomorrow on the budget. And budgets matter. So we'll see you on the radio at 3, 2, 5.